Work. <laughs> Before I start, this is just something maybe people could pass around and kind of imagine what it might be. This particular, this is what we're talking about. This is entitled parking lot Dublin, and that's exactly what it is. It's it's exactly a parking lot in Dublin, which I can actually show you. Now I guess I will back up a little, give you a little background. I'm probably a little older than you think I am. I've been painting for 50 years. Okay. I've been painting squares from pretty close to that. My MFA was completely squares. Like the other ones, but backed up more. Two inch squares, no content whatsoever in that sense. One of my pieces was called Six Permutations of Vertical Groupings of Brown, Green, and Blue stacked vertically, which would contradict a logical brown, dirt, green grass, and blue sky. Which, and that's been in the content of my work all along. Hey, by chance, I just stumbled onto that early on. I also did color field abstract painting, like you see a lot of, which color is one of my main content. And it's not in this one, but in my painting. That's very important. And a lot of times, it does have, has no meaning whatsoever other than it is color. So, well, another little subcontext is I grew up not being able to speak. I've only been able to speak relatively normally for about the last 15 years. And along the way, oh, say 1980, I was at a, did my art history PhD with a guy named Don Preziosi, and we studied these guys, Charles Sanders first, Fernando Sassur, which are the founders of semiotics, which is not really too pertinent. But anyway, they broke up sounds and various things like phonemes, which would be like what? It, meaningless in itself, but collectively, it could be what, where, whatever. And at that time, I realized that my little squares were like visual phonemes. They had no meaning individually at all, but collectively, I could make them into something that had a content it was not possible for me to do visions spoken. And I've always been an abstract painter. Uh, realism does not have a lot of interest to me, other than as a spectator, like Joe Raphael's fabulous. Uh, if you've ever heard of Brian Skerich at times, he's a great painter who makes Chuck Rose look pretty amateurish. Um, but anyway, for the most part, abstract painting, non-representational is by the um, I also, along the way, I was looking for a job like some people do. I have a computer science degree, and I learned to do drawing on computers, like literally three-dimensional drawings. This was about 1985, and I got into doing computers. A little later than that, in the early 90s, I got in a situation where Photoshop popped up on me. Like, I'd, I'd heard of it, but I had no reason whatsoever to use it. So I dabbled in Photoshop, not in the sense of most people in collages, but building a 3D model, what's called ray tracing in the computer, which you build an environment, this artificial light that comes out. But it doesn't always come out quite like you think. And you take that image and post-process this in Photoshop, like change the tone of the color, or maybe take something out that didn't work, like the shadows too subtle or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, I got into post-processing 3D modeling with Photoshop. And I also do like just general 3D animations, which are completely that. But this is getting away from the, that. The interesting thing about Photoshop for me is I can use like a general photograph and treat it as if it were abstract. Like this kind of, even though obviously it's real in a sense, if I just point at you and shoot it, it could be, I, I don't have to aim at anything in particular. And what happens, which is not really obvious, if you pass this second picture around, mm -hmm. this is not a photograph. This is a collage of five different pictures put together. I shot this in 2005 in Dublin in what's called Canon 350D. It was an early digital camera. The quality's not that good. Um, actually, I've never seen this picture until the other day when it hung. I had it wrapped and didn't even look at it. And unfortunately, I see the old camera didn't really come through for me. It's a, it's a little, 
and at the soft side. It's not quite as good as I would have liked. The more recent, the first picture, first picture that went around is two days ago. It's like five times better than this. Um, if you look at it, it'll say it's like 300 inches by five feet tall, that picture, not 16 inches, 300 inches. And what's, with, that, with that other one, what's interesting is you get what I call the Trump Loy effect. You see that and you, you see that, but you don't really see what I saw. If you shoot a panorama like this, as you get out to the edge, it's going to bend and contort. Now what the guy can do is, in order to do this, is to make those contorted images, contort them back to what we think it should be. Like, so this is not real at all. You can't possibly see this in real life. And the further you back up, well, I'd say you back up to see the whole thing, okay? You can do that. It's very, like where you are now, it's very soft. As you come nearer and nearer to it, you can get to the point where you only see a fraction of it. And kind of the logic of what I'm doing is I take individual photos that are like five times sharper than the same camera could take the whole thing. So with the same camera produces an image that's five times better than you could possibly get shooting the whole thing. And they're composite manually, because um, if you have computers, hopefully you know that computers can do major screw-ups. They're very smart, but they can be stupid at the same time. They don't know what you want to happen. The same person can come up twice, different other things can come up twice. What I've done here, and in the, the one picture that's not marked, all the horizontals are horizontal, verticals are vertical. This brick is the building, holding it. There's a parking lot under here. This picture was really cropped. My sister-in-law, I gave her a copy. She cut out the parking lot of my picture. And unfortunately, it's an abstract picture. It looks good without the parking lot. So I just have this alternate version that does not show the parking lot. I've got the parking lot with fallen leaves and the bricks. But this was kind of cool on its own. There's a shadow on the top. And that actually is a story, but an Irish myth, but in a one sense, it's not, it's not really relevant what the story is. The picture is what relevant, what's relevant. And uh, it's about maybe 60 feet long by 8, 10 feet tall. And I think I've lost track of what I'm saying, so I won't finish now. <laughs> and there's a lot of artistical historical references which get by a lot of people. And just let me back up real quick. Along the way when I was doing the squares, I also was an engineer. I actually am an engineer now. The little squares could be analogued, analogued to the pixels pre-digital camera. Like pixels were around before the digital camera came around. And so like my squares are pixels, come to pixels, and if you go further up, in the last 15, 20 years, there's this thing called string theory. And I've got work that is made on branches, so we go from pixels down to, well, pixels and then, or atoms, they're synonymous more or less, digital. Pixels are the atoms of digital imagery. And string theory takes those, those atoms and break them down still smaller in what are called line strings. The, um, basically, a lot of the atomic quantum stuff is like what are called point particles. Literally mean there's a point, they don't have any size. So in the scientists admitted string theory, it stretched that point into something that they could actually deal with mathematically. I see. And it's interesting, but it's, that's just an extension on the atom stuff, because I read science all the time. That's what I do for recreational reading is, you know, the Einstein relativity, quantum mechanics, and weird stuff, which is really incredibly fascinating. Oh, I see what you're saying. Thank you. I think I should stop. <laughs>